Hi, grade sixes. How are you guys doing today? Uh, I am good, although it's freezing in the library. So I'm like all bundled up to keep nice and warm. And yet it looks so warm and sunny outside. So uh, I'd probably rather be outside right now. I was going to say, let me see if I have any bunnies to hold. But, um, okay, hold on. Can you guys see the magazine rack? There we go. The bunnies have been running loose in the library. So when I tried to catch one so that I could read with holding one for a while, um, they ran away. So they didn't want to be held. They'd rather be uh, having freedom running around the library. So they're having a good day. Hope you guys are too. Okay. So uh, it's actually getting really good because now that Officer Mueller has discovered them uh, digging the tunnel, they don't want to get in trouble, obviously, don't want to be shot, don't want to be put in jail. Um, and so the only thing they could offer him was for him to use the tunnel to escape with them. So... Um, it was very smart of Gerda to notice that he had a wedding ring. Sorry, I think the rabbits are up to something over there. To notice that he had a wedding ring and uh, probably had a family so that she could sort of use that to her advantage to say, well, your family could be safe too if you came with us. So smart thinking. Okay, so... Watch for the shovel outside. We'll cross that same night. So that's going to be their sign to him. If he sees the shovel, that he can leave too if he wants to. Chapter 31. Fritz and I went straight home afterward. Mueller's visit had left both of us with legs of jelly, and nothing he had promised was very comforting. As far as I was concerned, wherever we went now, his gun was still pointed our way. Another dreaded reality to add to my growing list of worries. As we walked home, Fritz pointed out the good news that Mueller would probably come with us for the escape. Otherwise, he could have just shot us there and earned himself a fine promotion for discovering that tunnel. I suppose that was how Fritz's and my thinking had evolved. The fact that we hadn't been shot and left to die was the morbid way in which we cheered ourselves up. We passed by a bakery offering old bread for a single Ostmark. Fritz said we could spare that much and bought some for each of us, which we munched on while we walked. It was dry and wouldn't go very far in helping our hunger, but it was better than nothing. Frau Eberhardt was in front of our apartment as we approached. So Fritz and I crossed the street and pretended to look in the storefronts there until she went inside. We'd go to any extreme to avoid her in the future. It was a long night afterward for me. As tired as I felt, too much had happened that day with Anna and what was surely the final cut in our friendship. The broken shovel and then Officer Mueller. If we had been found by anyone else, Fritz and I might be dead right now. Maybe that was still our fate. If Mueller could figure out what we were doing, others could too. It was only a matter of time. By morning, though, I felt a little better. We shared the last of what little food was in the apartment and then reminded each other that a new shovel was more important than a full belly. After buying the shovel, we made our way to the welcome building. It looked just as it had the night before, but different to me somehow, because now our secret wasn't ours alone and any safety I had felt in working on this quiet, unused road was gone. Fritz rubbed my head. Today will be better, Gerda. I'm sure of it. I frowned back at him. There's a pit in my stomach. Well, there's nothing in mine, so consider yourself lucky. I didn't like his joke, not at all. I'm serious, Fritz. Something bad is going to happen. It's only leftover worries from yesterday, Fritz stared at me a moment too long, as if trying to convince himself of his own words. 
Now, let's get to work. Things went fine for a few hours. I was in the garden clearing more weeds and had already emptied out a lot of the dirt from the basement. But then I saw Fritz at the basement window hissing at me to come inside and to hurry. His eyes were so wide I could see the whites from here. The reason for the pit in my gut. I dropped the spade and hurried into the building, careful not to make it look like anything was unusual if anyone happened to be watching. But when I ducked inside, Fritz had already returned to the shelter and I breathlessly raced to follow. What's the matter? I called while descending the ladder. My answer came as soon as I entered the tunnel. Water trickled beneath my feet and sank into the soil, creating a dense mud. The farther I walked, the more water there was. At the back of the tunnel, oops, bunny at my feet. At the back of the tunnel, Fritz had exposed a pipe that was now spurting out pressurized water like a fireman's hose. The hole in it wasn't large, but it was enough to cause significant damage and was getting worse. The streams of water tore dirt from the walls and sent it in chunks to the ground. Our tunnel was flooding and if we didn't find a way to stop it, it would collapse entirely. How did this happen? I cried. I nicked it with the shovel. Didn't even know it was there until water shot out at me. What do we do? Fritz wrapped his hand around the pipe, which helped, but water leaked down his arms, and we knew it would burst again as soon as he let go. Maybe even break open and flood the entire tunnel before we could escape. I have an idea, he said, but it'll take some time to get what we need. You have to stay here and hold this pipe. How long? I can't. However long it takes. Come on, Gerda, you can do this. So I stood on tiptoes, then reached up and replaced my hands with his. The water pushed at me with a force I didn't expect, and it took effort to keep my grip on the pipe. Hurry, I told him, just hurry. He ran from the tunnel and left me in absolute darkness. The flashlight was somewhere at my feet but already buried in mud and I couldn't let go to search for it. The water dripping down my hands was cold and the wetter I became, the more I shivered. Fritz said it would take him some time. How long did that mean? An hour? Two hours? Until evening? I couldn't hold on until evening. With water still dripping from the pipe, I wasn't even sure the tunnel would be here that long. If it collapsed, it would take me with it. In the darkness, a chunk of dirt, or maybe rock, fell somewhere behind me. I instinctively ducked, protecting myself from whatever might fall next. It terrified me to wonder how much had just fallen, and if more was about to come down. The only thing I knew for sure was that the mud at my feet was getting deeper. Occasionally, my hold slipped. Water would spurt at harsh angles, inevitably bringing down more chunks of dirt. At one point, it loosened a rock overhead. I heard something start to fall and backed away from the sound, but when it came again, it grazed my arm. From the sting, I was sure it had gave me a deep cut, so I couldn't remove my hands from the pipe to check it. It wasn't much longer before I was entirely soaked through. My wet clothes clung to my body, my feet were sinking in mud, and my hair was in my face and over my eyes, but I supposed it didn't matter because there was nothing I could see in here anyway. I was shivering and my fingers and toes were already numb, but I knew if I let go of the pipe, everything we had worked so hard for was finished. So I held on, doing whatever I could to distract myself. I solved long division problems, recited poems, and prayed for a stronger willpower, though it'd be the last trait my mother would want me to strengthen. When those didn't work, I sang songs in my head. Ironically, the only ones I could think of were the patriotic songs of the pioneers, but their rousing tunes didn't help for long. Time was crawling by, and I'd lost any sense of how long Fritz had been gone. Sorry, that just made me think of a personification. That's a really good personification. Um, or is it alliteration? 
I think personification. Time was crawling by, so it's where you give it a human-like quality, and it's not human-like. So um, time was crawling by, and I'd lost sense of how long Fritz had been gone. Was it an hour? Was it more? He would come back, I was sure of that, unless he had been arrested for some reason. Maybe Frau Eberhardt has, had caused us trouble again. She was absolutely capable of it. Or what if the tunnel was already collapsing from the outside? Maybe that's why it was so dark in here and why he hadn't come back. Maybe he couldn't. That terrified me, and I tried to shake the worst thoughts from my mind. All I knew was that Fritz had said to hold on. So I held on to the pipe and to my senses and to my courage, bundling them together and knotting them within my heart. I closed my eyes and repeated his last words to me. Come on, Gerda, you can do this. Fritz did return eventually. I wasn't sure it was him at first, not until I heard his voice calling for me. Where's the flashlight, he asked. Somewhere below me, it fell. Fritz dug for that first, and when the light finally returned to the tunnel, I began breathing easier. He was fine, and I would be after a while. But for now, I was exhausted and freezing, and my numb hands ached from the pressure and the cold. I'd, help him, I'd held them up for so long, I doubted any blood was left in them. What happened to your arm, he asked. With the light on it, I saw the cut was much worse than I had expected. It ran in a long, jagged line that would probably leave a scar and stung like it had been attacked by wasps, but at least it wasn't bleeding anymore. I shrugged it off and asked, What do you have for the pipe? Not much, but it'll have to do. Fritz held up a clamp and an empty bicycle tube. Papa once fixed a pipe in our apartment this way. It's not permanent, but it will work for now. Where'd you get those? The clamp came from Herr Krauss. He had a few people at his place for some sort of meeting, so he told me to go in his back room and take what I needed from his gadget collection. Didn't ask any other questions. The bicycle tube came from Claudia. She has extras in the shop where she works, and I hoped she wouldn't ask questions either. Claudia, your girlfriend? ex-girlfriend remember now move your hand it's going to spurt water but i've got to wrap this tube around the leak i obeyed and caught a powerful spray of water to my face before fritz got the tube over it but he pulled it tight and then began wrapping it around the pipe with every layer the water sealed up tighter hand me the clamp he said it's in my back pocket I grabbed the clamp, and while he worked to get it pinched around the pipe, I said, What do you mean, hoped Claudia wouldn't ask questions? Did she? He paused for only a moment and then said, I went into her shop, filthy and wet, and you and I are both thinner than we ought to be right now. Yeah, she had questions. What did you tell her? Only about the garden. I said I fell into the pond and that we needed the bicycle tube to prop up some plants. And did she believe you? Fritz finished sealing the clamp and then patted at the pipe. When he was convinced the leak was fixed, he glanced down at me and said, probably not, but she used to like me. I hope it'll be okay. That wasn't good enough, not after all our other close calls, but as things became more dangerous, simply hoping for anything good was probably the best we could do. Okay, so they've got a lot of stumbling blocks with this tunnel. Um, okay, so I'm just going to read one chapter for today. It's about 14 minutes. Um, and then maybe next time I'll read two chapters. Yeah, next time I'll read two chapters. Okay, well, I know I'm enjoying this book, and whoever is still listening along with me, um, I hope you are too, so thank you for that. And um, 
yeah, even if one person is still listening, to be honest, I'm going to find this still worthwhile. And I have read the book before, but I forget so many things that it's worth it for me to read it again. So I am enjoying it the second time too. Uh, this Friday, we're going to be doing a parade of the cars. The staff uh, is going to drive around different parts of the neighborhood. So you'll probably hear about that from your teachers. Um, so I'm looking forward to that and hoping to see a few of you on Friday. Okay, so see you guys later. Bye.